out here today. I've got Rhea and I've got Kai with me today. Um, Rhea is a Swedish outcount, Kai is a Norwegian outcount. These are two of the finest uh, examples of females of the breed that you'll see. And uh, Rhea is one of the pups I raised. I sat with her when she was born. And uh, this phenomenal dog, I've got pups out of her already. She's already had a couple litters and uh, we're going to take another litter. Now, we're up here on the Bear Trail today. We're doing some scouting, checking things out, seeing what's going on, looking for sign, things like that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, this concept of what's coming and why these dogs. I'll say things that people are, some people are not going, they'll go right over them. But if the Lord's allowed your eyes to see and your ears to hear, um, you'll get the message. We're about to come into some times that we haven't seen before, and they're going to be quite a shock for a lot of people. They'll be very brutal. And one of the most important things in all, if your dad hasn't told you this, I'll tell you, one of the most important things is always going to be your dog. Ria, Ria, stay by me. Your dog is what's going to uh, keep it together for you in these kinds of times, but there's only a handful of breeds that are specifically bred for this time. This is one of them, that's one of them. These dogs are specifically purpose-bred for survival and to help you survive and to look after you and be with you and be 100% loyal and be there to take care of you. That's what this dog is for. Unfathomable evil is potentially coming. And there's a lot of people that are getting organized and they're getting prepared. Lots are not even aware, which is totally fine. I'm only talking to those with ears to hear and eyes to see. And we got two litters of this breed coming and two litters of that on the ground, two more coming. Either one of these dogs are phenomenal at survival. Now, this dog has a couple advantages over that dog in terms of gatekeeping. If I leave Rhea at the gate, nobody's coming in. It's anybody steps over that gate, they got themselves to blame. That's it. And uh, she ain't letting anybody in. Her brother Ark, if he's there, they are not getting across. And uh, these dogs, if you want them to keep the gate, they're the original keeper of the gate. If you want them to keep that gate closed, they will do that. This is phenomenal dog that way. This dog can find stuff that you would never even be able to know. She'll find things that you, you wouldn't even have a clue they were there. She'll be walking along and she'll, she'll scent a animal or game anything right there. Now, the days of designer dogs, they're over for a while. Designer dogs are done for a while. Nobody, nobody but the clueless are getting them right now. Anybody that's really looking uh, to pay attention is getting one of these. Come up here. There's a certain thing about survival dogs, dogs that are bred to help you live and help you survive versus dogs that are dependent on you. And lots don't understand, have never seen the differences, can't fathom the differences. And dogs that are bred to help you survive, help you work, help you do a job, help you protect your family, help you protect your kids. Dogs that are bred for that specifically for thousands of years have instincts way, way deep 
that you can't even begin to understand and it takes a lifetime of working with this dog to even get a glimpse of the abilities of this dog but it's so far superior to other dogs that it's not even funny most dogs have no instincts for survival work left almost no breeds there's uh, very very few this and that are two breeds these are the Norwegian and the Swedish Elkhound the Jantan are still bred specifically for that and we focus on that I work these dogs exactly like they should be worked I watch for the traits I breed the females that have the traits with the males that have them. Now, family dogs extraordinary. You want to leave your kids in the stroller with the dog and want nobody to put their hand on the stroller. These are the dogs. They're instinctively aware of their pack, of their surroundings, of who's they're supposed to watch. It doesn't take a genius to train this dog. You don't have to be a dog trainer. What you're getting with this dog is the ability for the dog to already know. This dog is phenomenal in that regard. It's just an amazing dog. Now, what will happen over the next few years, possibly four, maybe five years here, and most of the so-called experts in prepping and all the stuff that's coming, the military boys that I'm listening to, the military I'm following, What's going to happen is things that we haven't seen before. And almost nobody's going to be ready for it. They've been telling us for a year now to get ready for it, but hardly anybody's listening. But all my guys, the, all the breeders, all the people that I'm working with on these dogs, we're all well aware and we're getting set. And so that's why we got the litters coming. And uh, we had planned to have them earlier, so you'd have a little more time with the dog, but something came up, of course. War is war. And uh, what happened is the litters got a little delayed, but they're bred now, and they're coming. And so uh, now is the time to get a hold of us and get one of these dogs now while you're getting all your gear ready, all that. Now, I won't talk a whole lot on all the stuff you need for prepping, but I'm sure you can find all those details. But what I find when I look for guys that are trying to educate people on how to get ready, they all don't know the dogs. None of them actually know which dog. They talk about dogs that they should never talk about. They should never send a person um, information about a dog that hasn't been bred for the job that that just don't make sense you just come by me here i know she wants to get going you just come right up here turn up here so we can see you. there oh, that's okay you want to turn around me huh. come right up here come right up here come on that that then we can see you then we can see you these dogs are bred to help the handler survive. And they'll find game. They'll keep animals off you. They'll alert you to evil. I'm going to tell you something that most don't know. But again, this is for those that can hear. But there's only a handful of dogs. And we're talking less than five breeds that I'm aware of. There might be a couple overseas more in a uh, few of the places, but very few breeds can smell evil, can smell the serpents, can smell the reptiles, the, the evil satanic freaks, and can tell you who they are. And that's why this dog is so valuable because all of the evil freaks are out and they all know they're going down and they're trying to take a bunch of people with them and do a bunch of evil before they go because they know they're going and so they're everywhere and people are getting more and more aware they're everywhere this is one of the few breeds come up here 
They can smell it, believe it or not. You know, you watch all those shows, and uh, they they got to tell you in movies, and they show you that the dog sometimes can tell the evil person, but the people can't, right? Now, they, they normally use a trained dog, which is fine. That dog really may or may not be able to tell. But the reason they use a dog to show you is because they have to tell you. And it's one of their signature moves because they know the dog can tell. And so this dog, you see, it can tell. So can that breed. And my old lions, you see, they got all the instincts intact. So they can smell it. Now, I'm going to give you a piece of advice you should never ever forget. When your dog tells you not to like somebody, believe your dog. Don't ever second guess your dog, especially this dog. This dog tells you don't like somebody, don't like them. This dog tells you get back from this person, get back from them. This dog tells you that person's got to go, get them gone. The instinct of ability to identify evil is what makes these dogs profound. They went with the old Vikings all the time. Now, you just see right up here, we're going hunting in a minute. She wants to hunt. Come up here. Come on. Kai, come here. Then she'll stay for a minute. The beauty of this dog is it can be in an environment with other dogs and not get freaky. But this dog will keep other dogs that it doesn't like away from you too. But the beauty of this dog and this dog is they can operate as pack units. And so you can have one or two, you can have one of each. These dogs are pack oriented. Now the Vikings found that on the ships when they're traveling, their dogs could travel all intact, all on the ship, all in close quarters and never an issue because they were so bonded to the handler and they were so careful with the others. But yet, as soon as they landed, they were all set. They were ready to go. And these are amazing in that regard. And I find them a, a phenomenal dog to work in a pack. Now, you can train this dog to be, to do everything that dog can do. They both have the exact same skill level. They both have the same personality. They both bond. You can have both off leash. You can have both um, doing everything. If you saw the sister, Ayla, to this dog, I've trained Ayla. I had trained Ayla um, to be a mentor dog. Ayla was probably one of the very best uh, mentor dogs that I had and was an incredibly gifted dog. Now, I spent time with Ayla, and a very, very gifted dog for mentoring. I wanted her to mentor. I wanted, that's what I wanted her for. And so she excelled at that. Now, I needed a couple gatekeepers, and I had Raven and Ark and Rhea. They're, they're keepers of the gate. And if you've heard that phrase, the original dog that that phrase was for was this breed right here, the old keepers of the gate. And uh, in the very old days, what would happen is if you had a male and a female, usually you kept two females and a male. And uh, what you would do is you could take a female and a male and go hunt and leave one of the old girls at home to keep the gate so that uh, the yard was safe when you got back. The reason you always keep two females and a male is if a couple males come by and the old boy gets in a scrap with the two, the females will come in and clean up and so that's why you run a female or two with an old male all the time and that way the old boy can go hunting you can take the young female she'll do most of the work but she'll come in at a moment's notice and really tie right in they're uh, they're true warriors and uh, they got no problem uh, duking it out with some mutts that come by they will look after you no doubt about her now they can hunt all day, both both of these, and they're extremely skilled at hunting. And they'll find game. Now they won't. They'll they'll find pretty much whatever you want to put them on. And uh, so you you can train them. Come up here. Come up here. Right by me. Come on. 
come here. Right. Uh, just right up here. Uh, uh. So you can put them on just about anything. If you want them on uh, moose, you can put them on moose. You want them on something different, you can train them on something different. I also have every one of them geared for pack rat because if it comes within a thousand yards of my place, I want somebody to let me know before it gets in the yard. So every one of these guys is freaking. They're all freaking if a bear comes by, stuff like that. People come, Rhea's on guard, watch and think she's, she's all set. You just stay by me. So yeah, phenomenal dog for these times coming. I'm so happy and blessed to have them, and I'm so happy to help everybody get one. I mean, wow, what a time. You come right up by me. What a time to have one, and what a time to be alive and to go through this, period. And to have the opportunity to share with people something that is truly amazing. Um, out of everything in your go pack, everything in your prep world, this will be the most valuable thing there, by far. And uh, it's just going to be an amazing uh, time for you. I'm going to fix this harness that broke on me and I put a clip on, but uh, I'm going to patch that up. But I got a couple litters of this dog, but what's coming? You better pay attention and you better get your packs ready and get your ammo and your guns and sight them in and get your bows. Put your cache files up. Make sure you got some stash files where you can get to gear. Have gear in multiple places. Don't put it all just in one spot. And make sure you got water in those places where you can get to. Put them not right close to the water. Stay back a bit, but know where the water is. Otherwise, you're up all night. And get your dog used to the zones you're going. These dogs are geographically aware, okay? So if they know the region that you're headed to, and they've been there a few times, and they know where your camp is, if they have to go work, they'll know where to come back to. They're geographically aware. All the old boys keep geographically aware dogs, and I do too. And they can find their way back to where you left them. If, you, if your dog goes on you, you hang tight where she left. That's my girl. Just hang tight where she left and wait her out. She'll come back to where you left. Now, if you walk from your yard, okay, you can go home. But if you've driven to your go place, and you got out, go to your camp, then release her. She'll come back to your camp. She'll know where you are. She'll be ge geographically aware. Kai, come. So those are key things. Have a dog that knows how to get back to you. Have a dog to keep lookout on you. And designer dogs are not what you want now. They're pretty much gone for right now. That's like, uh, that's like suicide. I'll continue this in another video.